It's becoming just clearer and clearer to people, especially as we live with the information over, over decades, that it is time to act, especially since the solutions are here and it's so easy to, to act. And so it's up to us to signify to change makers, to legislators, that we are ready and want those changes to happen. But the only way we do that is by adopting that change within our life. We have to work in tandem with those in positions of real power, but we also have real power as well for the choices that we make every day. I think that is empowering to know that we can actually positively benefit our world and the future by the choices that we make every day. One of the challenges in dealing with the climate crisis is its scale, its magnitude, the time frames involved. And so seeing the Earth uh, as beautiful as it is floating in the, in the void of space helps people, I think, to shift their perspective away from the narrow short-term focus that most of us uh, sp spend time uh, dwelling on naturally and, and just uh, shift to think about what's at stake here. We started um, with this dominant story arc of doom and gloom. Um, the one that tells us that human beings are terrible, horrible, no good, very bad. Um, when you come through this lens of solutions, the other side of the story, I think, becomes really clear, which is that human beings are also <laughs> creative and compassionate and collaborative and committed and every now and again brilliant and, and pretty gutsy. It's a really easy speech to give, actually, when you look at the science of the problem and the timelines that we're on. Like, screaming, I have a nightmare, really doable and, 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 and reasonable. Um, but it's not working as a, as a strategy. Um, we need the clear, incredible vision that's actually worth fighting for. I think it's a pretty effective tactic to emphasize the positive, right? Like, a bombardment of terrifying news, which I just threw at you, is paralyzing. But focusing on the positive, I think, is empowering. I consider it my life's mission to convey the urgency of climate change through my work. And to that end, I've traveled to the polar regions to capture this unfolding story of ice melt, and also to the equator to document the rising seas that are a result of the ice melt. And my drawings explore these moments of transition and turbulence, but also tranquility in the landscape, allowing viewers like you to connect emotionally with places that you might never have the chance to actually visit. And I choose to convey the beauty of these very remote regions as opposed to the devastation in the hopes that it will inspire people to want to help, uh, help protect and preserve them. And finally, activism. As Ed Abbey said, sentiment without action is the ruin of the soul. So unlike a lot of conservation um, groups, we take activism very, very seriously. We believe that if you see something that is going and trending in the wrong direction toward your values that you need to stand up and shake the tree. And the idea is to engage people in conversation, teach, inform people, raise the awareness of this global crisis, but also engage people on the, in a conversation on what we do next, not just repeat the problem as much as it is we now need to do something and encourage people to do those solutions. And it's not a one solution problem, one solution fix, but it's, it's going to take a, a global community effort. What excites me is the power of this film and the films, the shorter versions that we've circulated to um, get folks to communicate with one another about what they can do. Because like we can come up with a bunch of ideas, but uh, our power is getting this out to folks like yourselves um, who are connected to different industries um, and get you all thinking about what you can do, how you can collaborate with your, uh, with your colleagues or with other people who you know about making some kind of change. And even if that's just raising awareness so that you can continue that brainstorming together for that collaboration for change. I think it's essential that everybody joins. 
it's only through collaboration, Denise, that we're going to solve this problem. You know, individually we can do lots ourselves. In, you know, and the problem is we're all acting too much as individuals. And we're like pawns for the slaughter, basically, as individuals. Because the big corporates, the big vested interests, the fossil fuel industry, it, 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 there's so much power, and at government level, this will not happen. The only way is for your generation to rally together across the world and, and take these issues and say, look, what can we do collectively? Because by doing things collectively, you have power. You can change things. You can spread message. You can network with all of the others across the world from here. You know, you have all the networking skills, you know. I, I, I'm in a room here of people that could be the game changers for climate change. And I really mean that.